So we are going to determine the y displacement as well as the rotation only at three points on the midline, the three nodes. And at any other point along the midline, we have to determine the y displacement or the rotation, we have to interpolate between the corresponding values at the nodes. Let's talk about interpolation. An interpolation is at the heart of the finite element method, so it, uh, I would urge you to spend some time really understanding this, um, considering that it's a core idea. Earlier we saw that once we know the, um, the deformed shape or the state of the neutral axis or the midline, we can you know, go all the way to the determining the potential energy of the, uh, of the beam. Now this, this curve is determined in terms of these discrete values. So we have an additional step in the numerical solution procedure is to go from the discrete values. Let me write that down. So I have the values at node one, at node two, and at node three. And from these six values, I have to, uh, you know, go to this curve, and that's where interpolation comes in. So this is the step in which you have the interpolation. For instance, let's consider this segment. Um, let's say that's, you know, you'd call that segment an element, and let's say that's element one, and that's element two. So at element one, I have the dis y displacement here and the y displacement here. So let's say that's node one, that's uy one, and then um, this is node two, so that you would say that's uy two. And if I used only the y displacements, okay, then the interpolation would be, so I'd get basically my, um, the relation for ui, right, of x in element one is going to be a linear variation. So it's going to be something like a plus bx. That's going to be the equation of the line. And we saw that having a linear, um, you know, variation and, and constant slope creates this kind of a non-physical thing. So that's not the right way to do it. So you have to bring in the rotations, um, and let me talk about that. At this, at node one, I have rotation theta one, which we saw for small rotations, again, there's an assumption there, is equal to the slope, and similarly at node two. Okay? So now I can determine this interpolation in terms of four parameters, which means that I can, I go to a third order polynomial. And, and so my interpolation will look something like that. And then when I write the interpolation for the second element, you know, I'll get a dis, uh, continuous slope and I'll get something like that. So you construct this interpolation element by element, and the interpolation is uh, over each element is third order. And I've, you know, I've talked to many students and I advise many students using this kind of a model and answers, and very few of them really understand why the interpolation is third order. And, and so it, and, and I think that's an important idea to understand. So I would, you know, urge you to, to kind of uh, make sure you understand this idea. 